Hey guys, Noel here, and it is Friday night, and I thought it would be fun. Well, we've got a little bit of time on our hands. We've got to have a week and a half of free time for Christmas break to do a fun video game review for the video game section of the YouTube channel. One of my favorite episodes of The Simpsons is the one called uh, Marge Be Not Proud, and uh, it features uh, Bart stealing a video game named Bone Storm. Uh, I was showing that to my students the other day. We all had a great laugh. It's one of my favorite Christmas things to watch. So I thought it would be really cool to review the game that Bone Storm is based off of. And that, my friends, is Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Now, we're actually going to review this for the Nintendo 64 um, because Bone Storm was actually a cartridge game and not a CD game on The Simpsons. Um, I was uh, in seventh grade when that episode came out, so when it had the Goro guys uh, beating each other up with the limbs flying from the ceiling, I totally recognized uh, the Goro characters and the brutalities being referenced. So we all know that uh, Mortal Kombat Trilogy is literally uh, cool as ice. So let's uh, get down to reviewing it. Right now, we've got some uh, Baywatch uh, on in the background playing on uh, Pluto TV. So this is going to get about as 90s as it can get here, and uh, I am totally okay with that. So let's uh, set our uh, camera up like so. We'll actually uh, zoom in a bit. And I will uh, turn the volume up, hit the lights, and we'll get down to some fun gameplay right now. Kano. Okay, it's Kano. Now, the cool thing about Mortal Kombat Trilogy is that... This game is essentially Mortal, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Uh, however, uh, this game has additional uh, character costumes and stages from the other Mortal Kombats, uh, like 1 and 2. This is sadly the last Mortal Kombat game that uses digitized graphics. And when I was in 7th grade, uh, I thought this game was just the greatest thing ever. Um, I still really, really like this game. There is Sonya, who I, uh, you know, was uh, essentially in love with since uh, I was 12 years old. Um, so, um, the, uh, the digitized actors, uh, I think, gave Mortal Kombat a lot of personality and uniqueness. And once uh, Mortal Kombat 4... Uh, came around, uh, it uh, really, um, I think, became more generic. So let's actually uh, pump the difficulty down for the purposes of this review. Now, the nice thing about the Nintendo 64 version of this game is there is no load time. Uh, the downside about the Nintendo 64 version of this game is there are fewer characters. The Sega Saturn version and the PlayStation version uh, has additional boss characters from the previous Mortal Kombat games. Um, we're going to be Scorpion here. He's my go-to guy. So the cool thing about Mortal Kombat Trilogy is you can uh, increase your challenge uh, for your uh, arcade ladder. Um, I always like just to do a chill novice run. Um, and that is going to be uh, plenty challenging. Uh, actually, it's pretty cool. I got a Jade action figure the other day at the local comic shop, Heroes and Villains. Now, Mortal Kombat lacks the fluid gameplay of a game like Street Fighter, uh, but it does um, offer very nice um, digitized graphics and spectacular moves. And the gameplay... Um, it's not bad, it's just different. Uh, rather than sweeping the D-pads, uh, lower quarters, and hitting, you know, punch and kick buttons, um, you're doing a lot of back-back-forward type stuff. Um, back-back-forward punch, back-back punch, uh, those types of things. So the uh, combat in this game definitely feels... Um, 
I don't know if mechanical would be the right word that I'm looking for, but uh, maybe somewhat disjointed. Um, that said, uh, it is responsive and it is highly enjoyable. And a lot of people say, oh, they just like Mortal Kombat for the blood. The blood adds to kind of some of the uh, fun, silly spectacle, uh, which is super uh, cool in my opinion. But uh, to me, Mortal Kombat, especially these Mortal Kombat games, it's the, uh, the look and feel of them. It's the bright colors, it's the actors, um, it's the engaging music. Uh, and it is the accessible gameplay that make Mortal Kombat good. Now, it's uh, lacking the, I think, artistic beauty of the Street Fighter Zero or Alpha series, or even the King of Fighters, but nevertheless, there is a whole level of thrill and charm uh, that these digitized Mortal Kombat games uh, give you. Now, uh, unfortunately, I do not know um, really the fatalities for this game like I do for the original Mortal Kombat, which I just played the absolute crap out of uh, in fa when I was younger. In fact, my mom actually would not let me get this game when I was in junior high and high school, and I had to wait until I was an adult to actually buy this game. The only Mortal Kombat game she would buy for me was the original Mortal Kombat, and after that she was kind of, you know, uh, not going to buy any more of these games. So I had to get my Mortal Kombat fix from games like uh, WWF In Your House, which was also made by Acclaim and used digitized graphics. Um, but I played a lot of Mortal Kombat Trilogy at my friend's house, and... I really, really enjoyed it, and I had one friend that had the N64 version and another friend that had the PlayStation version. I had a Sega Saturn, um, but I never got Mortal Kombat Trilogy for it. At the time, I really did buy into a lot of the hype of this game, and also at the time, the digitized graphics really did cause a lot of excitement in terms of their realism. Um, being able to see lifelike actors be combined with over-the-top violence really did give you uh, a kind of a visceral uh, thrill that was just very cool. It wasn't something that was hedonistic. It wasn't something that was voyeuristic. It was something that was like, wow, people, wow, crazy, insane moves that can't be done in reality. <laughs> this is like the best thing ever. And that was really the attitude that I had playing this game when I was growing up. Uh, now, as we get further and further uh, into this game, uh, the bosses, particularly Motaro and Shao Kahn, are going to be uh, quite uh, difficult and uh, annoying, to put it mildly. Um, the music in this game is good. It's definitely not as good as something you would get from a uh, Capcom game of this era, something like a uh, Marvel Super Heroes or uh, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter or a Street Fighter Zero game or a Street Fighter... Um, uh, you know, a collection game, even those games with the CD soundtrack of, uh, that well, came on the 3DO, uh, to Street Fighter 2 Turbo, um, were fantastic, and really, I think, blew Mortal Kombat away, uh, but that said, uh, this is still, um, very, very enjoyable and unique, too, because the thing that made Mortal Kombat special was because in a world of... Um, hand-drawn uh, sprites, these digitized graphics really stood out as something uh, unique and exciting. That's not good. Come on, Scorpion. Don't screw up. Crap. They're so close, and then I, I just choked there. I hate endurance rounds. They're always such a pain. Uh, so, right before you fight the boss on uh, Mortal Kombat, traditionally you uh, deal with something toasty called the uh, Endurance Round, where you uh, have a single bar of life, and uh, you have to deal essentially with the King of Fighters format here, but with one life bar. So, there's that, and I have been uh, felled by Kano. 
Uh, why don't we, uh, we'll try a different character here. We'll try uh, Sub-Zero. Now, um, in this game, we only get the Ninja Sub-Zero, which is the best Sub-Zero. But uh, in other titles uh, for the PlayStation's um, uh, effort for Mortal Kombat Trilogy, uh, we get the Sub-Zero without his mask and the Sub-Zero with his mask. And we're at the bottom of the pit right here from Mortal Kombat 1. This would be where you would fight Reptile. And uh, you'll notice that this has the arcade limbs and uh, we have our lovable uh, Toasty popping up in the corner there. Now, Sub-Zero is cool because Sub-Zero does have the Hadouken-style motion for his... Uh, shoot, man, Sonya. Uh, he does have that uh, Hadouken-style motion for his ice. And that is a really clever move to be able to... A really a petrify your opponent and uh, stop time for them. It's uh, really one reason why Sub Zero is one of the fan favorites here. Uh, I think Scorpion is my favorite. My favorite Mortal Kombat characters that have to go uh, Scorpion and Johnny Cage. And then uh, Liu Kang and Sub-Zero would be really close behind them. And uh, Sonya is just a cool character. I like Sonya a lot as a character, but I never really mastered her playstyle. I don't know if I've mastered anyone's playstyle in Mortal Kombat, but I definitely was uh, not as good with Sonya as I was with the four characters I just mentioned here. Another fun thing about Mortal Kombat is you always have the boss kind of narrating your fight in the background. Well done. Another thing about Mortal Kombat that was a little odd was the uh, block button. Shoot. Crap. Um, rather than just holding back you would uh, have to hit a button to block. And we'll do one more fight if we lose. If we win, we'll keep going and see where this review takes us. But we're already at the 12-minute mark. Yeah, so everyone watching this, tell your parents to buy you Bone Storm or go to hell. In this case, it would be buy me Mortal Kombat Trilogy or go to hell. This is uh, a level I like quite a bit, this uh, Mortal Kombat church level here. Uh, mainly because it's, it's very colorful and it's got that organ music. <laughs> There's the bone storm. Come on. Darn it. Man, I got Erica Laniac out of the in the corner of my eye on this screen here. That's what I'm blaming my loss on right here. You know what bothers me is on Pluto TV, when they're showing these remastered Baywatch episodes, they're cutting out uh, David Hasselhoff's Current of Love for the closing credits, which is infuriating, because that is, like, one of the best things about Baywatch. I will complain about that almost as much as I complain about the New Orleans Saints cheating to beat the Minnesota Vikings in the 2009 uh, NFC Championship game. Alright, get uh, buy me Bone Storm or go to hell once I KO'd Kano there. I'll tell you, the uh, fluidity of the Hadouken motion is not there like it is in Street Fighter. So there is a greater sense of panic when you are playing and uh, that move doesn't uh, execute. Because everything about the fighting in this game is uh, much more disjointed than in Street Fighter. All right, we have got a pretty much 50-50. Right now she's getting the lead here, but we had an even match. Crap, come on, man. My, these are my old tactics on Sega Genesis right here that I'm using. Come on, come on. Freeze her, man. Shh. 
isn't good at all. Oh, he got her. I was hitting that Hadouken motion for my fireball, and it was not working. So now we're at Motaro, and uh, we're probably going to lose, because he is a gigantic pain in the neck. As we can see, this guy's made of boss rage right here. <laughs> With what with his uh, teleporting around the screen and punching you across the screen. Uh, and projectiles will not work on him either. Now the cool thing about Mortal Kombat is they would always have one boss that was uh, a stop motion character and uh, they have Motaro for uh, for this game, the, uh, the crazed horned centaur. Uh, one thing I did not like about uh, Mortal Kombat Trilogy is um, uh, the game uh, was uh, a little darker aesthetically than, <laughs> wow, that is hilarious, uh, than the original Mortal Kombat, which was more like a hodgepodge of 80s movies. Uh, okay, so that's going to be it for our review, guys. That is a Mortal Kombat Trilogy, a highly, highly enjoyable game to play um, on uh, either the Sega Saturn, uh, Nintendo 64, or Sony PlayStation, and we just experienced the awesomeness of this game on the Nintendo 64. So until next time, guys, I wish you a uh, Merry Christmas. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the very near future. Bye-bye.